Thank you very much, Ginny and the desk. Ding. Bold words. Flacket, awesome. best performing right Wait, now. Certainly an opportunity to prove it today, as highlighted by Jamad as well. Ice, no slouch himself. And I'm kind of hoping that we can fast forward 20 minutes into the game where we start the portion of the game where we just team fight. That's what I want. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like, like that's, that's where all, it's going to... Yeah, that's where it's going to all be about. Yeah. Like, there's going to be some preamble. There's going to be a nice, like, intro context setting mm -hmm. portion of the yeah. game where you... You got to introduce the, character. the characters. Yeah, 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 character backstories. But, like, I'm just trying to get to the end of Season 1 of Game of Thrones. You know, just give me the big battle. That said, here we are. Players taken to the stage. Give it up for BDS and Team Heretics. Of course, crucial best of three to kick off playoffs. They do have the luxury of double elimination, but nobody wants to drop down in the first round. Yeah, I'm very excited to see these two teams face off. I think coming into this weekend, this was the matchup that's the most contentious, that I feel is probably the closest. And for both these squads, as you say, trying to not only put themselves in towards the next round of playoffs and win that, I think as well kind of solidifying where they are in the minds of a lot of people and a lot of fans, because for BDS, trying to rebuild after what has been a relatively shaky spring, especially coming off the back of winter, and then now you're looking at Team Heretics as well, which has been an incredible, like, insane to see how this split started for them versus where they are now. I think probably the most questionable roster changes from a public perspective that we've seen in quite some time. And despite that, despite the, the short notice that a lot of the players on the team have talked about getting, despite the sudden last minute changes, they have excelled in every way possible. Of course, they're 4-5 at the end of winter. Coming out of this one at 6-3, contesting top of the table for so long. Remember, they finished 7th-8th. So the big thing is here, if they just lose two best of threes, who cares? You did just as good as the previous team, it does not matter. So I think it's all about how much further can they go? BDS were top four, last split. Even if spring has been shaky, they want to go even higher. Both these teams have talked about it. They want to go to China. They want to go to MSI. They want to contest G2 at the top of the table. But you're not at G2 yet. You got to beat each other first. And both these teams want to get their hands on his ear. <laughs> so we're going to see as we get into draft what happens there. Because it really does feel like new. When you look over the course of his career, 65% win rate on his ear. It's by far his most played. And definitely champion that he is very well versed with. Even if Adam tries so coyly to hide it in the interview with Trouble earlier on. Yeah. But definitely I think I that like is going to be something we look at. What do you mean he plays it? What? I don't know. I have no I've, never seen, I've never, even, never seen Nuke play What even is in his ear? <laughs> I've never seen in his ear. Is that, a, is that a dish or something? Is that a food? And then, yeah, I think for uh, Zyro as well, something that he played a lot in the URLs. So I'm excited to see what they can do here. Because um, I definitely think that this mid matchup is going to probably define a lot of it, especially when you look at Yankos and Trimby, who like to interact there yeah. as well. And I think when you look at how both these players play, certainly they can get out of the comfort zone of Control Mages. But I think they share a comfort zone in the form of Control Mages. Azir now banned. Oriana taken away, which is unsurprising. But what does it open up for BDS? By a champion that I don't know. I'm not a big fan of, but has seen a lot of priority. Can just take the Zeri now. And the Karma as well. This is a champion Surprise. reminder that has been hit. Uh, cooldown reduction when you hit an ability from her passive up to, or down to four seconds or five seconds. Yeah. Much higher mana cost if you're maxing Q early. Not gutted, but much, much weaker than it was. In the yeah, there's match. like hit, and then there's taken at the back and hit. You know? yeah. It feels well, like that's kind of where karma is more well, at for me. Like the increase of mana is absolutely absurd. It makes it really tough to actually manage your mana as you start to come into the matchup. And a lot of your cooldowns as well, not having that uptime in your push. Like so much of this has gutted the solo lane karma that this feels like it has to be going to lab problem. It's definitely a possibility. Range support focus, not something that we've seen a lot of outside of um, kind of these more niche picks. We saw Zillion and Bard yesterday, but we don't usually see the Enchanters more often than not. We see a lot more of the utility if it's gonna be ranged, stuff like the Renata. So, taking their time here, BDS do have, technically have the luxury of a flex pick, but also go top. But this is one of those champions that has been, at least in stage games, I've heard it's doing great in scrims, stage games, super feast or famine. Either you're popping off, you're hitting every mantra queue and you look unstoppable, or you look kind of like a shield bot, which is not really what you want from someone who's getting so much of your team's goal. The mid lane, that's the Jax though. Again, another technical flex. Yeah, I think it will just basically match wherever the Volley Bear goes. The Q on the Volley Bear is where you want to try and get your Counter-Strike available as the Jax and try and shut that down. So if <clears throat> it is going to go into the jungle, great, you've got the uh, the Jax there. If you want to put it top, works out fantastic as well in that situation. It's cur I'm curious to see exactly how they want to play around it because I think having the Volley Bear nerfs come through where his hit is move speed. I think having an Orianne in the mid lane to use that W to speed him up is going to be great, but also that's a large portion of your damage. So I'm curious to see how Heretics want to try and play around it because I do feel like this Volley Bear is more than likely going to Yankos. I would assume so as well. 
Now seeing top lane bands come out, maybe hoping to sculpt a somewhat more optimal blind pick for Wonder. Something that always has to be We talked about this. Wonder's normal champion pool, it's uh, you know, it's pretty stock standard for a top laner, but every time he plays up against Adam, he gets more creative. He knows what he's getting into, he's more ready to pull out a few more uh, tricks. Yeah, it's really funny when you look at his match history. It's like Cassante, Aatrox, Tank Rexai. Yes. He played against Adam and BDS. Twist of fate. I've got twist of fate. Twist of fate. No, twist of fate. <laughs> and it won. It won. And I think that's kind of where you have to try and target BDS in a lot of situations is use the side lane to your advantage. And I think having Wonder go back towards something that can do that is going to be very valuable. But you no, know, Jack's gone. And the opportunity to try and play a pushing side lane as well may not be an option here. But I'm curious how they want to try and approach this. Is it just straight back into big team fights? And do we get Trimby onto something where maybe like a Rakan here, where he can actually try and play very, very aggressive. Okay, well, they're actually going to bat away. Band out. Yeah, I think having something where Trimby can be unlocked early is pretty big here. But I'm curious what they want to go for. Yeah, well, of course, Band, not conventional safe line pick support. Renekton and Darius both taken away when it comes to the top lane pool, along with the Olaf, which was banned in the first phase. So we will see a little bit more confirmation on where a lot of these picks are going to go. Now, remember, when we talk about Zeri, most pros feel like this is a champion that you really have to pick something that can deal with her, and very often that means a Nautilus, a Vi, or potentially a Camille support uh, for Team Heretics. Keeping it safe, keeping it standard, it's a Cassante. You know, you're always going to get some value out of it. It's not the flashiest pick. It's like Orn, but you get to push more buttons. <laughs> It definitely, this is a composition that is built around this area for BDS. So I think you're going to see them maybe even go back to something like a Scion here for Adam. Just go, maybe go tank top and just try and play this front to back. Because as long as you can keep Volibear and Cassante off of Zeri in the back line, yes, you can go Alistair here, but the threat that you have realistically onto Zeri in the back line is really difficult to deal with. Plus, you've got a Karma to speed up both Zeri and Jax in a lot of these skirmishes and team fights. So I think this is going to be relatively tough for Heretics if they end up taking a lot of these early skirmishes, which I feel like BDS are trying to set up for. But again, that doesn't feel very BDS-esque in a lot of situations. Yeah, they try. Obviously, we saw the game where they you know, they pull out the Callista, and the first few minutes look good, but then they kind of fumbled the transition into mid-game, okay. which is very usually the case for teams that try to play too early game focused. BDS grabbing a Twisted Fate for themselves. And that is going to go into the top lane for Adam Wonder. Is just going to get out econed here. Adam just going to pick up so much money on the top side in this matchup. But now, Volibear, as kind of expected, being matched by the Jacks of Sheo. And it will be, of course, the Nautilus and the Zeri bottom side up against the Varus Alistair. So the thing is, if I'm the ankles, I'm kind of happy to play up towards top side. I know you kind of look and go, hey, and Alistair, I got the setup. I can try and look towards Zeri. But realistically, Alistair going to be playing on the back foot in this matchup. You usually want to try and use your Pulverize as the Nautilus engages to prevent any sort of follow-up. So I think if you have Yankos play up top end, you're finally just wave clearing the bot side. Dive's not really going to be a big issue. And there is an opportunity you can attack Adam. We've seen it a couple of times in LEC where a Twisted Fate tries to play into a Cassante. And as soon as you burn, say, an early Flash or an early Ghost, the Ghost that's available on the Cassante, that means you can chase down the Twisted Fate. And I'm pretty sure we've saw it in like Madeline Koi's matches previously. Yeah. So I'm curious if we end up with a similar situation here where you put early attention top, shut down Twisted Fate, and then Yankos can open up on the rest of the map. Yeah, I mean, you just hit a situation with Twisted Fate where, yes, you can be half an item ahead, but if you're not really diligent on how you play the lane, Cassante always has that solo kill pressure, courtesy of the all, courtesy of the, you know, the infinite ways he can go unstoppable, mostly just the W ulti reset into the W again. But now here we are. Heading into our first game. One side of the bracket resolve yesterday, another resolve here. See who's moving up to the upper side, who's getting knocked down. Kick off this first game. Keep my eyes on where BDS are going. Oftentimes you'll see teams move up topside with TF, try and get some early vision down to set him up for success in the laning phase where you can actually play aggressive on towards Wonder and use the bush control that he has, but BDS to try and move in here to the bottom side of the map instead. Creative level one. Gold card, obviously. Gonna feel pretty good early on, and Alistair level one gonna feel pretty terrible, so BDS relatively comfortable knowing that as long as they have equal members, they should be favored. Boris always a little bit of a concern early on, but Black is going for lethal tempo, not for the Hail of Blades, so not quite as oppressive, at least for level one. Yeah, I think we'll have the on-hit virus for Flacken, which I think is the right call here. Yeah. You kind of need that consistent DPS. You're not going to hit a Zeri or, you know, a, TF, a ghosting TF yeah. with, with 
a piercing arrow. It's just not going to happen. Well, you can. It's just you're only going to do it once before you die. Yep. You know, that's the, the main problem. But I still think he's going to have a little bit of that issue coming into this, where if you end up in a, the control going to BDS in the early stages, and they're able to get some towers down, very easy for Adam to ult on towards mid, pick off Flacket because he's that little bit vulnerable, and Trimby can try his damnedest, but you just can't cover the amount of angles the BDS would be coming from. So I definitely think there is an onus on heretics to try and control the early stages, ensure BDS are getting early towers, and starting to snowball this game. And a lot of that then is going to fall towards, I think, Nuke and Shale. I want to see BDS playing through this mid jungle. It's a super strong combo and trying to get the control to play towards that, play towards dives, making sure that this twist of fate can then lead its way into a strong mid game. Yeah, I mean, the counter strike, the early mobility of a Jax can be so oppressive if you have that setup. And Adam also has the sun cards on the top side, makes so many things that much simpler. Yankos to see if he can match. Volibear has been the early game terror and just about every single game we've seen in building these early leads, so strong in early skirmishes. Jax does have some positive interactions into the pick, but it's not as cut and dry oftentimes early on. Yeah, I'm keeping my eye on where Shale's pathing here, though, because did red into Raptors now up to topside, which generally means you're going to go for some sort of play onto the top end. It looks like Shale might just do that. Maybe expecting a three camp into topside gank from Yankos. We're already kind of talking about burning yeah. early summoner spells on Adam. So it looks like Shale just going to try and keep his topside safe and make sure there's no funny business from Heretics. Mid dive, not something you would initially expect. We'll move in, we'll spot if the camps are missing and likely start to at least have a better estimation as he now pings out bot side camps. He knows generally where Yankos is, where he can assume safely, and that means Nuke. He's fine to just keep pushing, to keep stepping forward here, knowing that he has the Jax to shadow. Yeah, and it's just smart play from Shale. You're kind of, again, looking to make sure Adam can be in a good lane state. And the one way that can kind of be messed up is Heretics playing up towards top Trimby. A little bit far up, but waiting off to the side. Okay. So an early reset for Flacket to pick up a coal. Trimby, I believe, waiting around the corner just trying to catch XP, knowing that obviously if he walks in there and shows his face, they're just immediately yeah. going to engage on him. And as expected on the top side, Adam with an early advantage. Some of that is the TF passive. Some of that is, of course, the small CS lead he's been able to accrue. Fun. Fun for wonder. <laughs> what an enjoyable <laughs> laning experience. But we've talked about it. I mean, he's got... There is a moment, and many moments, where he will have kill pressure if Adam makes a mistake. Especially at level 6. It's, but you do need Yankos to try and burn that summoner spell early, so you have that kill pressure available. And Yankos now moving up towards the upside. Reset knew that Shale was going to be able to contest him on the bot side. It's and will push for Ice and Labrov. Doesn't want to try and overextend there. So just spotting now that the Raptors are going to be respawning. So maybe has a chance to try and look up towards this top side, especially Adam not in the best positions here. And I think... BDS. I just push him into him. Should be fine. Their ward around mid lane fades right as Yankos starts to wander in. So they at least know where Yankos was. They don't know that this is warded out. The so BDS moving up together. Yankos now on the top side, just clearing out a Gromp Shale will be able to secure the Raptors. But fortunate timing on the ward that they can't at least see that coming and move to try and stop it. Uh, Ice and LeBrov doing well on the bottom side of the map. They've gotten a lot more uptime, I feel like, on relevant roams as LeBrov's already shown face mid lane and is just walking back mid after the reset. Trimby now going to try to go mid as well. 80 carries. It's the coal zone. They are farming. We'll, we'll come back to them in 20 minutes when it's time to team fight. But until then, uh, it's just, you know, farm power hour here. Look, both 80 carries know what this game is going to be about. And it's Trimby wants to roam, so Labrov has to roam to match. Yep. And already you can see BDS doing a good job of getting a ton of vision control in his bot side river to spot out exactly that. So really nice job from BDS, at least in the early stages, to spot that out. But again, I think it's going to be a case of, okay, when we get Nuke into position where he can try and shove against this Orianna, which will happen in just a little bit of time, that's where I want to see them actually getting deeper vision here for BDS, yeah. so they can look for plays or spot out where Yankos is to keep him safe. But with the bounce back on bot side and also the reset from Nuke, just going to try and take Dragon here for Heretics. But a lot of members of BDS in the area. Yeah, BDS moving to respond. It would be a 4v4 if all members show up. TF now roaming down. Adam does have level 6, but the window here is pretty small. The Dragon going to go to the side of Team Heretics in a moment. But Cheo following up to steal it away and that's going to be embarrassing the bear cut down by the man with the big staff adam now coming up with a gold card that's a level three alistair flashing now out to safety bds not only do they get the drink they get two kills team heretics not respecting the twisted fate great timing from adam on the reset hit six immediately starts to move into this bot side and wonder it just used the teleport to reset into that top side of the map so bds knew they'd have the numbers advantage labrov setting up perfectly with the hook as well and I gotta say that I think a little bit of sleep at the wheel there in terms of the smite, the fact that Shea was able to walk into that pit. 
uh, a bit sloppy from the side of Team Heretics. Two kills are the, you know, the insult to injury in this context. Now a significant gold lead, 1.6. Some of that artificially inflated by a Twisted Fate. Passive, but still. Pressure now in their favor. Bot side, Zeri getting a kill. Ice getting a kill in this matchup. So crucial as we get later into the game. And Yankos not quite having that early game impact we've gotten used to seeing from the Bolivar. Is now he's in no man's land once again. Luckily, Trimby's going to be roaming up shortly to cover. Shao's already burned his cooldowns, just trying to take down this crab, so nothing's going to come of it. We'll walk away fine. A big too far forward there from Yanko's new cut push in mid. Thought that maybe with the bot push, he'd be able to go for a scuttle, but Labrov already had Shao behind him, and Shao would have been able to try and assist with Ice coming back into lane as well. Would have been able to cover that, so... Excuse me, sorry, going to be forced to back away. And this is kind of where, I think, again, for Yanko's, it's trying to dissuade the early playmaking from BDS, but unfortunately, we're trying to go for Dragon early. They kind of forced their hand and gave that moment for BDS to make the play. Definitely did. And um, using a lot of resources just to try to stop the play as BDS comes in. Don't really have enough left to actually find any kills, get put on the back foot, are at a man disadvantage because of Adam coming in. And we've seen this a lot. I mean, TF, most of the time, I think when he's locked in, you think about his laning prowess, but and how much of an advantage he can build, the gold card, things like that. But teams have just been disrespecting the global map mobility of this pick. Yeah, 100%, but I can understand where heretics are trying to find their footing is like, hey, look, if we get early dragons, we can actually force fights as a team fight, and it means that then BD has to walk to the beat of our drum, but not yeah. really getting that opportunity now and giving that bit of a safety net to BDS is massive. Three grubs though for Heretics, definitely a big takeaway because one of the things you want to do is Adam to be able to chip away at these turrets. Extra boy grub damage going to be massive for that, so at least it's something that Heretics have picked up nicely here. Yeah. And I, I think really the... There's a world where they get the Drake and it feels less bad, but level four Trimby Aftershock fading away means a lot of damage. Ice, quick to capitalize on the level advantage he has on the bottom side. Ahead in XP overall. Remember, Flackett was forced back on an early base, and now Nuke starting to roam down at least a little bit, debating. Hiding in fog, just kind of threatening. Information here from the side of Team Heretics isn't perfect, so they just kind of have to assume the Orianna is everywhere, or rather the Karma is everywhere until she shows her face mid. Spyro now the one to roam down, but Lebrov oh, already wrapping. Nuke on the chase in, hook into the wall, doesn't even need to connect on the target initially. Just some good poke, and that's going to suck because Nuke's just going to keep free firing these Mantra Qs under tower, and it's just that much harder for Slyro to play the lane. Adam. Oh, going he's out. Oh, no, he's, he's not out. Perfectly timed. Barely able now to bring him back. Might as well be a solo kill. Adam thought he had the angle, but Wonder going to find the kill. Didn't have the ghost back up. Knew that Wonder had his, so he was always going to get chased down in that scenario. So tried for the only thing that he thought might work, which was the ultimate, but just barely clicked with Wonder and he's gonna have to back away. But at the moment, I mean, nice job by Yankos to get something back, because BDS kind of running the bottom side of the map at the moment with Nuke having this much pressure. I didn't think the Karma would be able to keep up as much control as she did, but this has worked really well for Nuke into the Orianna. And the good news for the side of Team Heretics is they find that very small window of opportunity where TF does not have Ghost. They punish him for ulting in just slightly the wrong spot. That means a kill to Wonder. Things get a lot easier for this Cassante. The Iceborne, the slow, gonna mean a lot more kill pressure in the 1v1, a lot more threat. But awkward sequence in the mid lane there where finally Zviro finds the angle to set up the shockwave with Trimby hovering in the fog of war. But by the time it comes through, Trimby's already started to back away. The play starts to fizzle. Now you're just down an Oriol and you haven't really done any meaningful damage to Nuke. But that's the thing. BDS have pretty much understood what heretics are doing on this bottom side of the map for the last few minutes. The like great vision control did just get cleared out on the bottom side. So they are aware of what heretics are trying to achieve in the mid lane. So Nuke relatively happy to go. Now don't really have much damage for the Orianna there. You're never really gonna kill Nuke. So he's happy to just keep that pressure up to allow Ice and Labrov to get more control on the bottom side. They already got a turret plate as a result. Ghost, Adam stepping up. Dodging the Q3 is big. Wonder, I don't think he has enough of a health bar to tie a time for another one. And it's a quick solo kill. Casual for Adam on the top side of the map, just walking the Cassante down, the sidestep on the Q3 clutch. The ghost diff, man. Every single time we've seen a play on top side, it's the fact you've got those little legs moving that bit faster and they're able to get out of there. And Ishael, over in the bottom side, just wants to try and cover. Yanko's Dragon started with the push for BDS in mid and bot, but you see there's not really much that Zwire has to deal with in mid lane. So can just try and move over here. Shockwave just though. Three plates now down in the top lane tower. 1.2k individual gold lead for Adam Nuke. Zoning Yankos away. Won't make the same mistake the Team Heretics did. Not allowing that jungler near the objective. Second Drake to the side of BDS. They are running this early game. 2.5k gold lead. Spyro just trying to clear out that wave as much as he can. Stop any potential follow-ups. 
and with it being Chemtech Soul, this is where BDS, I think you just forego the next several dragons. All you want to do is go, hey, we've got Nuku has pushing mid. Fantastic. Next dragon's up. We're going to shove mid, abandon bot side, immediately go up towards top side and start to play around Adam and make sure that he's going to be in an okay spot because he's already got one of the solo kills. He's nearly got that terror chip down for himself as well. And once you start to unlock Adam on the map, you're in such a good spot as BDS. But this is great from BDS as well. Like This was one of the styles that we saw them work on at the start of the split but couldn't quite get together. And maybe Adam, Adam won't be left together. Pulled back. Stunned up by the bear and the big man. Wonder grabbing the response kill. Top side is the only side of the map where there is action, but it just keeps happening. I should have said nothing, Drake. And it's a ghost <laughs> diff every time. Who has ghost? The other guy dies. Wonder has ghost. Adam dies. Vice versa. Yeah, and I think it's going to be a lot of that back and forth. But again, I think this is where BDS can start to invest resources up towards that top half of the map. Yeah, you got his airy, but you're going to be totally fine. Uh, the problem is, though, with Adam dying, all of these Void Grubs going across to Heretics is a massive takeaway from BDS. I think the real thing I'd like to actually see BDS go for and play for to try and counteract this is going to be the Rift Herald in yeah. two minutes' time. Oh, well, just over. But I think the big thing is getting Ice to reset to play off of Adam's ultimate. Because if you can get Zeri up into that top side to threaten the tier one, you can draw a lot more resources from Flacken and Trimby. You have a little bit more push from Zeri on that bottom side. And then you can get Adam to shove out boss and start to teeter up towards River and create that numbers advantage that we saw at the first Dragon as well. Definitely. I think the concern right now, the side of Team Heretics, is Jax looks pretty great into this composition in most fights. Depending on how many resources they're willing to burn, it opens up a lot of space for Ice as well. Uh, but that said, when you have six Grubs, if BDS ever make a sloppy cross map, if they're not, you know, 100% confident in their objective take, it's really easy for, for Team Heretics to trade up with the extra tower damage. But for now, have not found that opportunity. Adam just continues to be a nuisance on the top side of the map. They have Nuke on the bottom side, so they're going to basically go for the same play, but with Nuke investing his TP rather than Adam's ultimate. But Nuke can have to back away because Heretics, happy to forego the Rift Herald setup and immediately just look for bot side terror and get some gold onto Flacken instead. So Heretics is saying, look, we got enough out of Void Grubs. Let's just, well, take the terror plates and get ourselves into a decent position here. Remember, yeah, this is... You know, probably would have been one plate is now a quick two plates. They're going to be a bit behind on the reset. Might catch out LeBrov. Yanko's just going to walk away. Second plate does finally drop and go to the back pocket of Flack. It looks like Blade of the Rune King going to be the first item. Yeah, I think it's impossible for Nuke to know how many members of Heretics are on that bottom side. So it makes sense to, to disappear because it could be Yanko's, it could be Yanko's Trimby, it could be a lot more problems and maybe Ice. Could be the focus here. We're going to be able to just walk on out of that one. But BDS, they're still going to get control up onto this top. Side? No. Uncertain. The resets did come through from Yankos. They know he was there. Now they're not quite as confident. A bit of a split decision. They pull the Herald out. Now they're going to keep that going. Adam there to hit the eye. Yankos wandering in. Will he get the cheeky steal? This is very close, but no. Eye goes to the side of BDS. Yeah, I think once they knew the Flacket was the one defending Pot Terror, they were like, cool, there's no way that you can actually have members here to outnumber us because we can always have Nuke teleport into the play. And even with uh, Flacket resetting as well, might give a bit of opportunity for chip damage onto Pot Side Terror here. I think the reason we're seeing PDS reset here, though, on the top side is because they don't actually know where Flacket is. Now going to spot him on the bottom end, so we'll know at least for the moment that, uh, that they're going to be fine on the top end. Seems to be the case. Curious that they've opted to put Flack in the bottom lane and not in the mid lane. I guess feeling more confident about some of the interactions that Orianna has with maybe jungle support as opposed to the Varus. But it does also give them priority access to the Drake in 50 seconds. Now, Team Heritage can move up. They've already pushed their vision line forward. But this is the thing. I think now they're going to rotate Flack into the mid lane. Uh, Flackage should be able to try and put pressure on towards mid, but I think this is where, for BDS, I think you forego third dragon. And I think this is going to be them trying to break away from tendencies we've seen from them, not only this year, but last year, is dragon being their main focus. With it being Chemtech dragon, it doesn't really matter. Shove mid, start to rotate towards top side. Nuke can clear out waves now that he's hit the malignants as well, and you can immediately start to punish Wonder, who's fairly overextended on that top side. I think he knows it as well. Just going to crash the wave and get out of there right before the dragon sets. But there is no need for BDS to fight. Pick on the Lebrov, or at least is what they're trying for. Lebrov will hook out to safety, so the trap kind of fizzles there, and Scryer and Bloom can at least spot out Team Heretics. Yeah, I think as much as I can see what you're saying, the nuance of it being Chemtech Soul, of it not being as important, clearly BDS are still prioritizing this objective to a certain degree. That's it, they haven't brought Adam down yet, and that's big. 
It's also, I think, they are just like, hey, we are quite strong. You have Static Shiv, Malignants, the Triforce. There are moments where they're hitting these spikes, and, I mean, Adam has managed to get on the top side, so it could be just a case of BDS feeling, hey, as long as we look juicy, Adam's going to get the work done anyway. But this is the thing, is it's, yes, you've stalled Dragon Stacking for Chemtech, Shao's still gonna poke his head in, maybe he can get another steal. Ice is already pushing that midway bit. Gold is just getting deleted there. Wonder now being forced to TP away, and this is an opportunity for BDS to go in, knowing that they have a man advantage. TF already roaming over. Shao, does he want to flash? Hesitancy from BDS. Don't want to overcommit to the play. Obviously, a lot of CC tools for the side of Team Heretics, but Adam wanders in, makes sure that they get the objective there. Herald Charge will not connect as Flacket clears it. And overall, the gold on that play, hugely in favor of BDS, even if it does mean conceding the Drake. I right, beautifully done from BDS. A nuke, though, doesn't want to get himself caught, will be able to escape. Yeah, on it, look, nukes, flash being burnt, a little bit overextension, but apart from that, really, really well executed. Labrov looks juicy, ends up being able to escape away from that. You get the terror topside, you get the play on mid lane. That was exactly what you wanted to do for, there from BDS. And honestly, I love character growth. That is yeah. not something we would have traditionally expected from BDS. Look, it's, we're, we're into the next season, man. You got to understand, you got to keep the character development coming as Yankos is now running. Hoping to develop a bigger health bar here as Shao dangerously close to killing him. Does get the ulti out. It's plot armor, man. Yeah, but it's a concerning it's sign for the fights to come. <laughs> Sunder Sky, you know, feels really good when you're getting those procs, but in the extended trade, Shao hitting hard. Lebrov. Okay, that was a psycho hook. That would have killed him. <laughs> he is very fortunate that that did not connect, but BDS, again, three members bottom side. Team Heretics are here to match, but Adam just eats towers. There's no response. Nuke already in top lane to stop the push coming through from Wonder. Tower about to fall bot lane. They will keep it going. Trimby really desperately trying to find the setup with Viro. They have the combo, the Alistair, the Orianna, and Fury, but the ward is already there to cover. BDS pretty meticulous with their vision control this game. And all they're trying to do is stop heretics from connecting. As long as Labrov and Ice are playing far up like that, they can connect with the members that are on the map. You can see Zwyro gets pushed out into that bot side. You have to retake this base as Trimby and Yankos, which is really difficult to do when you just don't know if, well, Adam could TP in in a moment. Now, it is still on cooldown, but still the thought is there. And you can also look towards... Ooh, hang on. Adam walking up, seeing so many members miss, means he can just pitch for the 1v1, the gold card present. Shield now popped from the Saros, but that just likely means that the bot lane tower will fall. BDS committed a lot of resources mid, I think maybe hoping to catch Ice out, but because nothing comes from it, they concede so much. Wave topside pushed in as well, and BDS can just push further in on bottom side if they so choose. They have such great information. Oh, nice one. Oh. Fighting off a little bit more than he can chew, though. That's the knockback, Shale. Wondering if this is the opportunity. He believes it is. Flash out the safety from Lebrov. It's clean. Ice for now, untouched. Flashback from Adam. A bit questionable there overall. The Brob definitely caught out, but luckily BDS are there to cover. Now Yankos has to be careful about stepping too far forward. Lebrov. Bold recall. That is not where you want to be. My man caught shopping. And it was so close to being clean from BDS. They get the bot terror. They were establishing vision on the bottom side, but small mistake from Labrov. I'm not sure if he thought he was going to get like a proc or some sort of indication that he had spotted someone in the bush thanks to the E from the Nautilus, but ends up just taking a bit of a lazy recall and gets caught out with this. Unfortunate, because I honestly, I was really enjoying the way BDS were starting to play out the map, but just small mistakes now going to give a control to Heretics, yep. where they can reset, get out on the map quicker, start to push in, look towards control for a next Dragon that's in a minute 35. And it's not really like BDS can very quickly turn over towards a, a Baron. Yes, they've got good damage, but if you're caught in the pit there, Heretics will destroy you. Yeah, they don't really have that super beefy frontliner, right? Like, Jax will mitigate some damage. They do shred the Baron with the sheer amount of characters just building sustained damage on this team. But you're going to take a lot of damage in response, and the follow-up potential with a champion like Orianna, with the Varus ultimate to kick things off, can make it devastating. Right now, Team Herrick's just trying to fish. Trimby waiting in the brush here. Other than Lebrov, though, it's pretty hard for them to lock down an individual target. Ice has cleanse, has flash, parkour over the wall, and uh, Mantra W for Karma still super, super annoying. But I think that Mantra Q should actually be on the bottom side of the map. I think yeah. the the issue right now is that for Adam, he's a little bit more vulnerable. If you're going to end up playing for, we're going to dodge Dragon and play for top side instead. And I think that's probably something we're going to see BDS go for again. But if you are in that situation, Karma just being able to easily wave clear gives you more value. So I'd prefer to see that it's actually Nuke on this bottom side, because he still has a teleport. He can still join the fights, but 
You can see Adam not going to be able to put as much pressure down, but just going to reset now anyway. And maybe we just get a full shift onto, we're going to ult Adam into this top side. He's going to sneak in and shadow Nuke in these situations and maybe look for the play onto Wonder. Team Heretics again. Fighting now to get a little bit away of Pryo to contest some of the setup the BDS have already put down, but it's Ice who's first on the mid lane wave. Vision being cleared out. Now instead, Team Heretics looks like they're trying to play through bottom lane. Relatively low health tier one there, so if BDS overcommit onto the Drake, they can just play for the counter push on the objective, but with the looming threat of a Twisted Fate TPing into your back line, this is a tricky one. All right, battle lines have been drawn. It's time for the Thunderdome. Screw the bot lane tower. BDS paying some money just to be here as that wave does crash into their tower, just gets deleted. Sheo trusting himself in the 50-50, and for good reason, that's third Drake. Getting pulled back now as the stun comes through, but Flacken again, just uncontested on the backside, starting to layer down damage. Forest with a quick double kill, shredding through those health bars. Ice still alive. Lightning crash is there, it's triggered. Starting to skate through the fight, but Team Heretics, good disappoint. Yes, they lose the objective, but getting two kills is nice for that big gold deficit. It's going to give a lot of control to Heretics as well if they're able to, I was going to say, continue the push forward. I think they could have committed members to, hey, we're going to push mid-wave, look for mid-tower off of this one, because I think this was maybe a window to really punish uh, BDS, but at least they'll still be able to get back out on the map faster with the reset timers, but there's no real way for BDS to threaten the back line. Wonder's in a great spot here to move Ice up into a position where he's not able to really get access into the back line, because Wonder is always going to be able to threaten him. Same with Trimby. It's just about buying a huge amount of time for Flacken to continue his free hit, and let's be real, Heretics just have the beef here front line. Like, Ice is doing just as much work as Flacket is, but just not hitting on two key targets, whereas on Heretics, Flacket is. Yeah, and you can see how simple it is for Team Heretics to play fights when they're on even footing, when it's not the TF flank, when it's not a main advantage for BDS. They have an Alistair and an Orianna. It's one of the oldest combos in the game. Even in the context of that fight, yes, Flacket is the one getting the kills. He's playing it very well, but it is the setup from Trimby and Spyro that makes that fight so easy. And for Nuke, this is the problem a lot of the times with the Karma is it feels like you have Mantra Q in these mid to late game fights and very little else because if you're in range to tether the Alistair, he's in range to combo you and you're going to die a lot faster when he's got backup than he is. So the BDS, at least at the moment, I still doing a very good job because of the static shiv of being able to control that mid wave. So it does open up moments like this where BDS kind of attacks side lanes. I'm wondering if very cognizant of that, immediately going to move away from this top side of the map. And at least that'll buy some space for Adam. But I think this is where we've been seeing a lot of BDS play mid two side lanes. I think this is the moment where you try, try and reverse that. You play Adam with push and top to TP onto mid and try and pick off Flacket. Flacket still has the cleanse available, but there is so much CC that can go onto him if you can gain that numbers advantage for BDS. You have to be careful. Don't want to give the Varus too much time. Varus for Sari scaling. Man, you know, it's always tough. Oriana, obviously, it's a big shockwave, can be big, but crucially, you know, Baron is now on the table and Nuke doesn't have Flash. So if Team Heritage can find a window of opportunity to start this objective. It's really easy for them to pick off this Karma. Nuke has to be very careful about not overstepping in side lanes. It's just going to catch that wave on the bottom side of the map. Does still have the TP, of course, to come to the fight. The reverse is true for Zvyro as well, though. If he ends up overextending this bot side, you can see how often Adam is just dipping into Fog of War. There's always a chance he's resetting and just shadowing Nuke. And if you are this Orianna, that's a miserable time for you in side lane. So you do have to be very careful with how far you push for Heretics until you get that deeper vision established. And I think the number one way that teams, at least in this split, have, have lost leads is side laners overextending. Whoever it is there, whether it's an AD, a mid laner, or a top laner, it doesn't matter. Especially against champions like Twisted Fate. We've seen so many players oh, stay for one more wave. Stay for that cannon creep die and then immediately cost their team a bigger objective like the Baron or vision setup for something else. And that's, you can see at the moment, Heretics, they don't move past River. They don't have the vision. Yes, you've got this one ward that is keeping some information alive at the back here, but they just can't really over-aggress because BDS aren't showing on waves. Ice isn't really in a position to go forward. Nuke hasn't shown on bot wave in a little while. Obviously, they show up now mid, but uh, e there are so many opportunities for them to just look for a pick as you try to establish that vision with numbers advantage. So they're just taking it slow, and it's giving this time for Ice to shove in mid, let BDS establish vision on top side, and just open up the avenues for Adam to continue pressure with Sheo. Going to be able to, yeah, just hop out there. Commits the smite. Not sure if he has no charge. Looks like he does. Cool down timer coming up back quickly enough. And uh, all is quiet. <laughs> One minute until the next Drake. Perhaps it'll be another Thunderdome. Summoner spells coming back for Nuke. Gearing up for the full on 5v5, Rob. 
What did we say? What did we say at the start of the day? First thing we said, skip 20 minutes forward. Let's get to the 5v5. <laughs> Doesn't matter what they I draft. I'm so sad. Here we I are. don't want a 5v5. If I'm here, if I'm BDS, I'm like, They're we five have and 15 minutes Sorry. to play with until Dragon is nope. an issue with Soul. <laughs> we no, just go. I'm gonna check with the, I'm gonna check with the script writer right now. It's, I'm okay, sure okay. it's gonna say 5v5. It's uh, mostly how we always end games, but you know, the classics are the best for a reason. <laughs> uh, BDS, if they can find a pick though, again, both sides push their waves out. While they have this brief advantageous state, they play down vision, then they linger in that vision. They look, they fish for these picks. They square up for what could be a full on 5v5 as Wonder. Not too recklessly face checks there. That is a tanky, tanky Cassante. Yeah, and this is where you're fine. Adam. Gold card, it resets the dash from the Vola Bear, but he's just not quite fast enough. But he is if he has Flash! But now he's just forced to walk away. Shao there to cover. That hurts for the side of Team Heretics. On the backside, Wonder fishing for the angle onto Nuke. Adam now isolated. Ooh. Ulti from Varus not connecting. Devastating. Team Heretics have to be really careful oh about taking God. this fight. They've burned all their cooldowns. They have no business continuing this 5v5. Oh man, the sunk cost fallacy is real. BDS are just gonna run to Baron. They know they're stronger. They do not care about this Drake. Nuke's just gonna poke. All right, Team Heretics. You've used every relevant cooldown for the fight. Outside of one or two ulties, can you stop this Baron? Look at Nuke though, Nuke's just being a pain. He just wants to try and slow them down with the Qs, see if he can get. Will it buy enough time? Oh. We said they could burst it. Yeah, they can't get in. Angus has no flash. There should be no way. Trimby's trying to kick this fight off. They've already got the Baron. Nuke's on the backside. BDS now running, ready to sacrifice LeBron if necessary. Flash out. Can he hook back to the wall? Yes, he can. Bob sees he's not there. Ice dipping, diving, dodging around, but Trimby! Desperate to keep it going again. They just don't have the shockwave. Flacket trying to get some damage down, but Ice is now starting to turn the fight back. They know they have the cooldown advantage. Team Heretics not respecting the difference in power. The cooldowns available to BDS. That was so many mistakes. A domino falls and Heretics panic and knock over the whole bunch. You see, as we go into this, oh, I'm not even going to get to see it, but I want to keep my eyes on Nuke as this one goes on, because Ice is actually doing a relatively good job here of getting a ton of damage off as this goes forward. But watch where Flack is, or where the rest of Heretics are positioned as Flack tries to come in. Nuke managing to come in from the spot side zones at all, but Trimmy goes in, but Flack is not in a position to really follow up. He's late behind the rest of the party, so BDS are able to deal with him. And Nuke, because of Nuke's positioning, it's really difficult for Flack to try and move into that position, because a Malignant's Horizon Focus Karma would deal so much damage and set up so well for someone like Labrov to follow up in that situation. So you just get stuck as heretics way too far without the necessary pieces in place. And in hindsight's 2020. I cannot say what Shockwave would have done there. Adam flashed anyway, even if there wasn't quite enough Orion at first to finish him off. But it's likely you kill at least one or two people. It's likely you at least take away some of these Baron buffs. Instead, you essentially walk away empty-handed. And now you have to deal with this Onslaught. So many of these champions have left alone. Every single one of these champions have left alone. We'll just start taking towers. And Team Heretics cannot afford another fumble. Their next execution has to be perfect or they will lose this game. Labrov needs to be careful, gonna back away. Adam already pushing in mid. Here's if he just holds the bot. No, he's actually just gonna take the mid lane tower, but always an opportunity to just immediately rush to bot side as well if he really wants to. Just start pressuring that lane as well. You're gonna do just that. And Heretics, this Baron buff gonna make it very difficult to deal with everything the PDS have available to them. Definitely frustrating. Yankos waiting in this brush. We saw it yesterday in our series as well. It was irrelevant who's hiding in the brush. The win that SK was able to garner so much because of that flank. Was it Oscar? Hmm. That was a different series. It's... Never mind. No, yeah, irrelevant. <laughs> irrelevant. Sorry, yeah, I can't yeah. keep track. <laughs> Too many people hiding in brushes. Nuke was caught off guard. The death bush never fails, but it does have varied success because this does mean that they're giving up a decent amount of health onto the inhibitor tower. Ooh, can the cannon finish it off? No, they're not going to stand in fight to give it the uh, farm buff. But it also meant that you don't get to play for Adam on bot side as well. So new bit of an overextension there will end up shutting down some of the pressure and we're firing a bit to wear off. Heretics, I mean, it's still there. The base is still standing. They've still got at least two outer towers that can try and play around, but definitely bleeding after that last one. It's just going to be a minute 45 until the next Dragon. I think that's really where Heretics again going to try and at least use the fact that BDS have to reset here to try and establish some vision on the map. But Adam should be able to continue that pressure on towards the top side. Nuke will be able to move into bot, start to push in there as well. And as long as they're able to keep this pushing on both side lanes, it's really hard for Heretics to deal with. Yeah, tough to respond. We'll see how much BDS want to 
prioritize the next Drake. It is soul for them if they can secure it. Baron, of course, only about a minute away from that, so not really in a position where both will be active on the map if they're quick enough on the upkeep or uptake. And, Kem, you know, we like to meme Chemtech, but it's a pretty big deal given that a lot of the strategy that I think is going to keep Team Heretics in this game is just hitting that Orion ultimate or catching out Lebrov, who's a little reckless here. Hooks out to safety, and Team Heretics don't have enough information to follow up there. I think he saw Yankos on the top side was like, oh, cool, I can start to cheat in here and get some vision control, knowing that at least we should have a numbers advantage here, but didn't expect three members of Heretics to be waiting in that bush, so didn't have the support of Sheo, didn't have Nuke in a position either, so he has to back away now. You still get to shove it out. You're still going to get your vision control down. You're probably more than likely be able to get the resets if you need to for BDS, so they're going to be fine in this situation. And even now, drifting Adam down, this is going to be some sort of fight for this dragon. They will commit to some kind of fight. It's had a lot of spectator objectives this game, where one team kind of just wanders around, maybe jumps in, goes for a steal. It's worked way more than it should. But Team Heretics can't walk in. They have no vision. They have no mid-prio. Bot lane isn't pushing hard enough for they anyone to care. They have a very tanky man, though. They just have walk one in there, very so. tanky man, and a bear, and a big old cow. And that is enough to force BDS back, at least briefly. That's the power of having better frontline. I mean, I've heard hero stories start with less, but heretics, they need a hero right now. They need someone to try and find a fight that's going to work out for them. And I feel like it is going to be a flash trimby into Zvyro ult to find multiple members of BDS to set things up. As long as it's not Ice, though, BDS will still have a good chance. Ice has got to be the main target. He's dealing so much damage at the moment with these four items. There's a ton of CC and setup, though, to make Ice's life a living hell. Has to play flawlessly, push now there, but at the same time, Wonder's cutting the wave. Adam, no ulti, already TP'd into the mid lane. Sheo in the back of the pit. Maybe just gonna hope for the 50-50. Finding the isolation, they're pushing forward to the objective. Wonder now on top, but wants to get Sheo out of the area. The dragon now taken down. Adam and Sheo off to the wrong side of the fight. No shockwave used yet from Spyro. Again, the placement has to be perfect. BDS looking, hoping for some vulnerability in the armor of Team Heretics to move in and take the fight. But honestly, well played by the same side of Team Heretics, cutting the wave from Wonder, stopping the TP in. They lost mid terror though. The inhibitor turret was the the, ca the casualty, casualty of that play yeah. for BDS. They end up using Adam's ult to get behind Wonder with the wave, push in and get that mid lane terror, at least get the chip damage they needed. So it is the dragon going across. It's still a major terror objective for BDS. But again, it's Heretics kind of starting to sneak away some of these objectives. And now with Baron up, it becomes a little bit more difficult again for BDS to start to play out fully on these side lanes because you know, three items on towards this Varus, you're going to start to do some Old major card. damage. Hoping to force Trimby's ultimate out. Get the flash at least. Adam locked up for a brief moment. Flack had taken a huge chunk of life. Excellently timed hook by Lebrov. Locking down Wonder. BDS again in a situation where these small exchanges have put them in such a favorable position to start the objective. Shockwave going to be big here. They're grouping. They're looking for the fight instead. Eyes on Spiral. Eyes on the ball. The BDS are aware of it as well. Not going to let themselves group up and get caught out here. They know it's the only way they lose this exchange. Sheo and Adam can just two-man start the objective here. The rest of BDS ready to zone off as necessary. Grouped five members of Team Heretics. Feeling a little dizzy. Not quite sure what the right play is. Taking a bit too much time to make their decision. They've already lost the objective, and now finally they'll start to step forward. But the fight has already fizzled. There's not an opportunity here. Instant follow-up now from Sheo. Pullback coming through. Ice again untouched on the side. Keep your eyes on that. Zeri. Damage not going in the right spot. And in comes the TF on the backside. Nothing. Team Heretics do matter in the face of BDS. Again, their patience, the execution, just better in this game. The team fights for BDS have been so clean and setting up Ice consistently to deal the damage he needed. And unfortunately, Heretics panicking to cover the potential play from BDS in mid lane. BDS will find the success that they need. BDS dancing around Team Heretics in these fights, not giving them any angle to leverage the AoE damage, the power of their composition, the stronger front line, playing at arm's reach, playing for the win and taking it in our first game. And a huge amount of it was BDS getting the early leads that they needed to, being able to find these towers to open up the map. And there were a couple of team fights that were a little bit shaky, but sure. Heretics consistently over -investing. You get way too many ultimates at that dragon fight. You get the flash forward from Trimity to try and set up the fight, but Flack not a position. It was a lot of over aggressive moves that ended up coming back to fight them. And then BDS just absorbed the punch and fight back. Yeah, BDS absolutely out executing. A couple glimmers of hope, I think it's safe to say. 
for the side of Team Heretics. We'll have to hope that they have more than a glimmer as we head into our second game. For now, though, we're going to head to a quick break. When we return, the Analyst Desk at Game 2. You know it as well. I also know you can dance. You should join me next time. And yes, I feel like you've also deserved a bit of a break. You've earned it. Thanks. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Good job. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Hey, shouldn't you be on stage right now? Hey, you got a pick. Tom Kent? What? I, I was not expecting this. And a crazy off meta pick that secured you the win. How did you come up with it? Oh. Uh, I just listened to my gut. 